Now at 5, job concerns IPS planning to outsource all of its school bus service. Worried employees taking their concerns to the board tonight. We are live with the latest. We're learning more about what might have happened here last night when a man was shot and killed at this Subway restaurant. I'm Stephanie Wade speaking with witnesses. I know this can happen to you. I know what the effects of it can be. Why one local mother is pushing for stricter distracted driving laws. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Good evening. We begin tonight with hundreds of IPS transportation workers worried about the future of their jobs. Last week, we learned that IPS planned to outsource all of its bus service starting July 1st. This impacts the jobs of hundreds of bus drivers and attendants, many of whom plan to take their concerns to the school board tonight. RTV6's Cameron Riddle broke the story and joins us now with those developing details. Cameron. Hey, good evening. We're just about an hour from that school board meeting uh, starting here in downtown Indianapolis at IPS headquarters. Every bus driver that you have seen today that has been driving a bus that says Indianapolis Public Schools on the side of it has been concerned since we broke the story on Friday about what their job will be after July 1st. That's why we're expecting many of them to go through these doors here and make their voices heard when they speak with the superintendent and the school board about the decision to outsource all of the transportation jobs that are related to IPS. That's 135 employees who are directly employed by IPS. All of their jobs will be gone at the end of the school year. They will be out of a job. Additionally, the drivers, 550 of them, that's monitors and supervisors that work for Durham School Services, the subcontractor for IPS, they are losing their contract. We've spoken with Durham School Services uh, leaders and they tell us the future is uncertain for them. If they don't have that IPS contract, there's no way they'll be keeping 550 drivers on the job with no routes to drive. So with that said, come July 1st, first student, which is the name many of you may be familiar with. They used to have the IPS contract 10 years ago. They are coming back. So now every driver driving for IPS today will have to apply to get a new job with first student. There are a lot of questions these driver have. These drivers have that is, especially the ones who have worked here 10, 20 years. They want to know what's going to happen to their jobs, their retirement, all of that. And of course, now they do not want to go work uh, for first student after all the time they put in with these two companies. So we are expecting the union to be here. They represent both organizations and they are not happy about this. They say they were blindsided. They did not know that this was coming and now they are having to scramble to get things ready to go by July 1st. We'll be inside that school board meeting when it kicks off here coming up at 6 o'clock and we'll have a full story for you coming up tonight on the News at 11. Reporting live downtown, I'm Cameron Riddle, working for you, RTV6. Okay, thank you, Cameron. We'll see you again soon. We're learning more tonight about what happened at this Northeast Side Subway restaurant that left an employee dead. 35-year-old Ashuk Kumar was shot and killed last night in what police say was an attempted armed robbery. RTV6's Stephanie Wade finds out this is not the first time this area has been hit with violence. I've been speaking with other businesses in this shopping center here, all telling me they feel terrible for this employee who lost his life last night. People here at this pizza restaurant saying they know him very well. He's a nice man and also saying this isn't the first time an armed robbery has happened at this shopping center. He's a really good guy, very nice, always happy, smile. Yeah, that's very sad for him, for his family. While mourning the loss of his friend and an employee at this Subway restaurant off of Shadeland and 75th Street, shot and killed last night in an armed robbery, Hans Pizarro can't help but think back to the two times he was also robbed at gunpoint while working at this pizza joint just next door. I scared for you know my life because I, I got only supporting my family. Yeah, so I take care of my family, so I got my daughters. <laughs> Pizarro wasn't hurt in either armed robbery, but his friend wasn't so lucky. Police are still searching for three suspects you can see here wearing all black clothing. Two have black face masks on. The third was wearing a leopard print face mask. The suspects also wearing black backpacks. Pizarro is worried if police don't step up patrols or add security, it will affect business in the area. Working for you on the northeast side, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. 
And anyone with information about the shooting or the suspects is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. And new information about a weekend murder in Franklin. Police today identified the victim as 18-year-old Donovan Burdine. The coroner said he died of multiple gunshot wounds. Police have arrested two suspects in this case. 20-year-old Emilio Garcia of Indianapolis is preliminary charged with murder and robbery. Another man was arrested for assisting a criminal. Burdine was shot to death around 6.30 Saturday night near the Boys and Girls Club of Johnson County. Kevin. Just about 5.05 on this cloudy Tuesday evening, if you've been out, you notice there's a little drizzle. Maybe you've seen a few flurries. The moisture hanging out. We can't shake the cloud cover, and it just shows you how moist the air is as you look at the broad view. Gray everywhere. That represents the cloud cover. I think we'll continue with some flurries. Maybe a little very light freezing drizzle, not amounting to much. Temperature right at the freezing mark up in Peru. 33 in Indy, 34 in Terre Haute. You realize today's temperature range was 31 for the low to 34 for the high. Usually you'd have at least a 15 degree range this time of year. Through the evening hours, we'll continue with that light mix of flurries and drizzle. Temperatures down into the lower 30s through 10 o'clock tonight. Off uh, we go through the overnight, and you'll see 10 o'clock. Notice the mix of uh, precipitation that stays with us till 1 o'clock in the morning as you're driving to work in the morning. Temperatures around 30 degrees, generally cloudy skies. RTV6 sits down with a woman fighting for change after distracted driving led to the loss of a family member. Indiana is one step closer to having a more strict distracted driving law on the books. And the House of Representatives discussed the bill this afternoon and they've, they expected to vote on it tomorrow morning. Megan Sanctorum is working for you to find out what this bill means for you as one widow shares her message. Photos and memories of Brian Sire are all his wife and kids have left to hold on to after he was hit and killed while trying to cross the road. We had the light for him, for the pedestrian to cross and the right of way, and an 18-year-old driver hit him. Kelly Sire says an investigation showed the driver was distracted and using his phone moments before the crash. That was about eight years ago. And since then, she says she's seen more and more people using their phones while driving. So she started reaching out to lawmakers and pushing for change. It's taken a couple of years, but she's optimistic this current bill will move forward. The proposed legislation would make it illegal to hold and use a cell phone while in the driver's seat of a moving car. Any cell phone or GPS activity would have to be done hands-free or with voice technology. If passed, she knows changes won't happen overnight, but she says it will be a big step toward a cultural shift in driving habits. She's hoping that by sharing her story, she can help stop another family from losing a loved one. Horrible things can happen um, in, in, a, in a millisecond, in a second, uh, by a decision you're making. And I know that the people doing it don't want that to happen. And um, I would just like to see this, this sort of trend and I think it's an epidemic stop. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And right now, 21 states have a similar hands-free phone law on the books, including Illinois and Tennessee. And good news for downtown drivers, all lanes of Pennsylvania Street are now open between New York and Washington Streets. Restrictions began a week ago, so crews could do planned sewer rehab work. All restrictions were lifted this afternoon. And police in Westfield hope you can help them identify this man here. They say last Tuesday he damaged the menu board and speaker in the drive through lane at the Wendy's on East State Road 32 and then took off. This happened just before 6 p.m. They say he was driving a white Ford F-150. If you know who he is, call the Westfield Police Department. Now to the impeachment trial of President Trump. Chances of hearing new witness testimony appear to be building after newly reported allegations from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Now this comes even as the president's legal team seems confident they can prevent witnesses from being called. ABC Serena Marshall has more from the Capitol. After three days and using less than half of the 24 hours they were given. It is not a game of leaks and unsourced manuscripts. President Trump's legal team wrapping up their defense, arguing the language in the impeachment charges is too vague. How do we tell under the House manager's standard what an illicit motive is, when there's an illicit motive? How are we supposed to get the proof of what's inside 
the president said. That question might be answered, though, by the president's longest-serving national security advisor, John Bolton, whose unpublished manuscript obtained by the New York Times alleges the president's motive was a quid pro quo. The Times claiming that in his upcoming book, Bolton says Trump told him he was withholding nearly $400 million in military aid from Ukraine until they agreed to investigate Joe Biden and his son. Democrats argue that's why Bolton must come testify. What we want is the truth, not some quid pro quo on witnesses. Now, a new suggestion floating on Capitol Hill. That manuscript is pertinent, and uh, we should be able to get access to that manuscript to be able to see what they're actually saying. It comes as GOP moderates signal they are likely to support Democrats when all 100 senators vote on whether they want witnesses later this week. I'd like to hear from John Bolton. The White House making the case to those wavering witnesses would simply prolong the trial as both sides should get to call them, and their testimony not likely to change the outcome on removal. I'll make a prediction. There'll be 51 Republican votes to call Hunter Biden, Joe, Joe Biden, the whistleblower, uh, and the DNC staffer at a very minimum. A vote on witnesses isn't expected until Friday, but before that happens, senators will get to submit written questions, and House managers and the president's legal team will have to respond in real time. Reporting from the Capitol, Serena Marshall, ABC News. Now to the investigation into the helicopter crash in Southern California that killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others. We now know that all nine bodies have been recovered. The NTSB is now asking local residents to send photos of what the weather conditions look like around the time of the crash. The fog was so thick at the time, police departments did not fly their own helicopters. According to investigators, an iPad found in the wreckage may have been used to track weather updates and flight planning. The helicopter was not equipped with a black box. Debris is spread over a wide area. The NTSB plans to be on the crash site for five days. Its investigation will include a meteorologist to examine the weather conditions and whether the pilot should have proceeded in the fog. Still ahead at 5.30 on RTV6, it used to be airlines offered you so many free things, but as we all know, that has sure changed. But after some digging, we found a few things that are still free so you don't waste your money. But first, another sign the month of May is getting closer. The ticket unveiled for this year's Indy 500, plus a little something extra for the winner's dog. February is getting closer, too. We've got the first weekend of February in the forecast. Temperatures, they will go up significantly, but briefly. I'll explain all that coming up. Overado 1500 pickups. The city of Frankfurt will be getting a new mayor. Mayor Chris McBarnes announced today he will resign from the office at the end of February. McBarnes won election in 2011 in his Clinton County hometown with 75% of the vote. He was a 23-year-old Butler University student at the time. In a letter to the community released today, McBarnes said he will be taking a new position as the executive director of the Wildlife Fund in the state of Wyoming. He and his wife will be moving there in early March. His last day as mayor is February 28th. He expects his successor will be chosen by then by Frankfurt Republican Precinct Committeemen. And a huge gift given to Goodwill of Central and Southern Indiana will make a meaningful impact on the education of adults. Goodwill announced today that longtime donor and former board chair Gene Zink and his family have donated a building that will become the permanent home for the Excel Center, Goodwill's high school for adults. The donation is valued at more than $1 million. The school is located in the Meadows area on the east side of Indianapolis. And the Excel Center has been leasing the building on Meadows Drive since 2011, but thanks to the donation, Goodwill now owns it. Approximately 300 adult students are enrolled with there. And another donation that will have a big impact, Decatur Township School District's Devere Fair Stadium will get a new synthetic turf field thanks to part of a $250,000 grant by the Indianapolis Colts through the NFL Grassroots Program. This field marks the 10th field in Indianapolis to be funded through the Grassroots Program. And the countdown continues to this year's Indianapolis 500. Today marks 117 days until the race. Another annual tradition today honoring the defending champion. IMS officials gathered at City Market downtown this morning. Simon Pagano was there to unveil the tickets for this year's race. The photo from Victory Circle just after drinking the milk. Pagano talked about how the past seven plus months since then have been quite the journey. 
you know, I've lived an incredible uh, second half of the year after May. Um, you know, I've gone into a new dimension, really, as a driver, as a person. Uh, not only I'm known as a driver, now I'm, I'm known uh, as a winner of the Indianapolis 500 all over the world. IMS also presented Simon and his wife Haley with a special one-off ticket for their dog, Norman. Another great photo from Victory Circle. The 2020 race tickets will be going in the mail very soon. I like that Norman howling in, in the winner's circle. Norman's a pro at this. We've interviewed him the past couple of years at the 500. This is, this is just his thing. May 24th, <laughs> Norman will be rooting once again for his dad to win the 500. It's, it's obviously going to have a lot of anticipation, right? Mm -hmm. First year with the Penske's owning this and He's talked about changes that are coming. A lot of new things. So looking forward to it. Hopefully. I'm looking forward to the warmth. The weather doesn't get in the way. All right, I'm done whispering. Let's talk about the clouds, the flurries, the drizzle. We've had the clouds around for several days, and we will continue that trend. The flurries are hit and miss mixed with some drizzle. Temperatures are at or above freezing in most locations, 33 in Indian Greenfield. Hello to Greencastle out in Putnam County, 33. Other temperatures just uh, below freezing as you go up 31 toward Tipton, 33 in Bedford. Now meet Paris. Now I can't tell if Paris has arrived before the meal or after the table has been cleaned off, but <laughs> she's just checking the scene. Maybe she's, she's waiting boss. for games to be put out for game night. Melissa Brewster sent in the picture of Paris. Thank you. Temperature stuck in the low 30s. If you have a pet you want me to take for a walk during my forecast, Kevin.Gregory at WRTV.com is where you send the picture. Let's talk about the timeline. 7 to 10 hit and miss areas of some flurries with drizzle. Then as we go through the overnight, they'll continue. Uh, the forecast models have been struggling with this a little bit, maybe overplaying the overall impact of these flurries, but just an indication of the moisture that's trapped in the lowest levels. Okay, there's our warming trend. Not that significant through Friday, but it does pick up steam as we get into early next week. Some more flurries tomorrow. Same temperature at about 35. That's average for this time of the year. The wind will be light out of the northeast. As we jump to Thursday, we may see a little sunshine. It'll kind of be self-destruct sunshine. The pokes through, then fills back in with more clouds. Temperatures in the upper 30s. There are the temperatures from north to south on the Thursday, but I think we'll do away with the flurry activity. As we go to the weekend, the Saturday system we've been talking about looks like it'll be weak, not a big impact. 20% chance we'll see a little rain snow mix. Temperature at 40. Sunday's temperature starts to warm up. 46 for the high temperature. Saturday, there's your rain snow mix potentially in the morning. Notice favors the northern portion of the state, then we'll start to slide to the east and leave the area after that. Sunday's dry. That's also Groundhog Day, 46 degrees. Can you spell Punxsutawney? I know I can't without double checking and then hitting spell check. As you get to Monday, 55. So Monday, Tuesday, I've got both days very mild in the middle to upper 50s. The question is, when does the front come through? Will it come through Tuesday or does it hold off until Wednesday? And that will knock those temperatures back into the 30s. But right now, let's call it mild Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Rather safe than sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, Disney is going back into the vault again. Variety reports Bambi is getting the remake treatment. According to the report, the 1942 animated feature will be brought to life with the same photo realistic computer animation used in last year's The Lion King. Barbie has certainly changed over the years and more changes are being made all in an effort to make her look more like the children who play with her. Visit the Hiring Hoosiers Job Board. Hello to you. I'm Julie Grant with Court TV, and it is day number five of testimony in Harvey Weinstein's rape trial in Manhattan. Today, the prosecution presented what's called an outcry witness to help support the claims asserted on Monday by former production assistant Mimi Halle. Elizabeth Enton was Halle's roommate and told the jury that her friend told her about the alleged assault. Monday, the defense put complaining witness Mimi Hille through a rigorous cross-examination. And perhaps the most pertinent point being made was that after she claims Weinstein forcibly performed oral sex on her, she says she, that she willingly had sex with him two weeks later.
Now, in opening statements, Weinstein's attorney told the jury that the accusations from the alleged victims are untrue and that during the cross-examinations, the jury would realize that Weinstein is innocent. If convicted in this case, Weinstein could spend the rest of his life in prison. And as always, you can count on Court TV for gavel to gavel coverage of America's most compelling criminal trials. I'm Julie Grant, now back to you in the studio. And you can learn more about other cases around the nation right now at CourtTV.com. Barbie dolls are known for getting makeovers, but this time the toys are evolving to better reflect the children who play with them. Mattel says a new release of toys is the brand's most diverse doll line yet. Some of the new Barbies have rainbow colored hair or no hair at all. Others have wheelchairs or prosthetic limbs. They also come in varied skin tones and one has vitiligo where some patches of skin lack pigment. After starting in 2015, the Barbie Fashionistas line now has more than 100 170 diverse dolls in that collection. And for years, you've been able to drive while holding your phone. That could soon change. And tonight at 6, why one local family says that needs to change the heartbreak they've gone through. But first on the Now Indy, most people who walk down the aisle are adults, but Indiana law allows young teens to get married. There is an effort underway to change that. You're watching RTV6.